Hello friends, welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, look into analyzing a, our product category or customer data using cohort analysis. Let me explain what does that actually means is showing in the Power BI file. So here what I have is um, a, a sales by product category by year. So it's a simple model. Um, product category is linked with the product. It's a, it's a snowflake schema and the product is linked with a, a fact table. Again, as a best practice, uh, you should always have a star schema, but in this case, uh, our uh, we have a snowflake schema. Um, so here, what I'm doing, showing you, is a, a sales by product category. So we have the a year on the columns and uh, from the date dimension table, and the product category on the rows, and then some sales on on the on the values. So this all looks great, but if we want to understand how a category did in the first year in the second year in the third year in the fourth year we cannot see from this particular uh, visualization so for example if i change the visualization of this to be see as in a trend line so i'm going to switch into line chart so what we have is like a product category in the legend and the year on the x-axis um, so what we're seeing is, okay, the, the product which started in 2017, uh, now they are showing, and that the product category which started in 2019, uh, they are showing in 2019. But we cannot visualize or compare this based on their aging or their cohort by, by the first uh, sales date. So to make that happen, what we need to do is, uh, we need to create a few, uh, add few columns in our model. Uh, to to make it work. So the first column what we need to do here is I'm going to switch back to the matrix visual so that we can see everything clearly there before we come to the line chart. So first thing what we need to do is for each category we need to find out the when the first sales of that category happened. To do that what I will do is I will just add a column uh, in my product category uh, table and uh, let's call this uh, uh, column as a first sales date. So again, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take advantage advantage of related table. Uh, what we're going to say is a, a sales table. So what is related table sales? Again, um, what the related table is going to give us. For each category, it is going to go into the sales table and give us the subset of that category. It will give us that table and that's what the related table does. Even the product category does not have a direct relationship with the sales table. Product category has a relationship with the product and product has a relationship with the sales. But with the extended tables uh, as part of there are too many videos and blog posts on what the extended tables are. Uh, we will get the uh, related table for each product category. Now, once we have the table, what we can do from here is we can use the min x and get the sales from the sales table and get the uh, order date. So that will give us for each category the first uh, sales when it happened. So let's look at this uh, quickly here in the visualization here. I'll bring the product category on the, on the canvas here and the first sales date. So here you go. So what we see is uh, the bike racks. The first sale is in 2020. That's actually sorted out by first sales date. Uh, these categories does not have any sale. So let's look at the mountain bikes. So if I click on the mountain bikes, as you can see, it shows us in the 2017, the sale started for mountain bikes. And the first sale was on 29th December 2017. If we look into cleaners uh, category, so the cleaners, as you can see here, uh, the started the sales in uh, 2020. So now each category has a different start time when the first sale started for that category. Now we know the first sales date of this category. Uh, what we need to so what we need to do is we need to bring everything in the same granularity or the same age, uh, the same cohort which we need to calculate here. So what to do that what we can do here is go to the sales table which is our fact table, add a new column in there and uh, what i will call that uh, category year number so what does that means is 
whatever the sales has happened, whatever the order date is, minus the first sales date, that will give us uh, the the age when the first sales happened, when the second happened, when third happened. So let's let's uh, write that calculation here. So our sales table, order date, minus uh, actually the year of the sale because right now we are looking at the year level only. So year of the sales order date minus year of the first uh, sales of that category. Now here we are going to use the related function. So first we when we calculated the sales, uh, calculate the first date of the sales, we use the related table function. And now when we are in the sales side, the sales is on the many side, we are going to use the related function. There is a video on the related table and related, uh, which I will post the link in the description. Do check out that video. So here we are using year related. So what related is, we are going to get the first sales date. So that will be first sales date from our product category table. So what does this is going to give us? Uh, let's say the first sales date is in 2019 and the order date is in 2020. This will give us the 2020 minus 2019, the one uh, year to year one. So for we will add plus one into this depending on where you want to start like you do you take zero as the first cohort year a starting year or you take one as the first starting year so i'm assuming the one so again depending on your need you could be using zero as well so this will now give us okay the for each category depending on their uh the year the, the first sales happen it will give us the cohort and bring everything to the same uh aging at the same level so let's uh, use this to visualize the data and see how does it look right uh, looks like so let's go back to our um, visual instead of using the year what we will use is we will use this new uh, column which we created called category cohort year number and put it on the columns remove the years uh, year column and and check that out so now it is much cleaner what we are seeing here is okay how much bike racks we sold in the first year so everything does not matter when the first sales of the category happen but what we are analyzing here is in the first year how many uh, how much uh, the sale we have the order we have for that particular category and in the second year how many uh, how much and third year how much and the fourth year so now everything does not matter when the sale starts for a category but now everything is at the same uh, same granularity now we if we visualize this data i'm going to change this to let's say line chart and uh, if we convert into line chart and bring the product category on our legend so now we can compare okay in the first year how the each category uh, how much it was uh, each category and how much was in the second year third year fourth year but it still does not make any sense one category might have a very high um, price for example like we're selling a bike a bike is a thousand dollar but then we are selling a seat for the bike, which might be a $50. So even if we sold 100 bikes, that's a $10,000. But if we sold like a 100 seats, that's like a $5,000. So the, the, the comparison by dollar amount does not make any sense. And to overcome that or to make it the analysis a little bit better, let's go back to the matrix visual. What we should do is we should find out what is the percentage of the total sales for each category in each cohort year, right? What is the 37,000 percentage in the first year? We sold bike rack for the $37,000. What is the percentage of the total sales for the bike? So this might be 95% or whatever that turns out to be. Then we will be able to compare, okay, you know, how much each category in the first year, what is their percentage in the first year? What is the second year and third year? To do that, what we will we'll do is we will uh, add another measure here. So let me write a measure. So first thing what we need to do is we need to find, we know the sales, what happened in the each uh, cohort. What we need is this $40,000 for each uh, cohort here. So that is pretty straightforward. Uh, what we need to do here is I'm storing it in a variable just to show you guys calculate sales. And then what we're going to do is remove filter remove filter from where remove filter what we use on the column and we're using on the column is category cohort here okay now sorry if i return this uh, i'm just gonna i will calculate the percent but i will just want to make sure that i show you guys what this will return return total sales 
Now, if we visualize this new uh, mayer in our uh, visualization here, so let's change it to uh, just call it percentage sales. I mean, we haven't calculated the percentage. I just want to have the short name. So here, what we see here is for bike racks, we have the 37,000 sales in the first year. And then this, this is the total sales uh, for the bike rack. So we have the total sales for each cohort here. Now the calculating the percentage becomes super easy. What we just need to do is divide um, sales um, divided by total sales so that will give us the percentage okay so now we have uh, what we're seeing here is for bike racks in the first year there's a 93 percent sales and the second year 6.10 percent sale similarly for mountain bikes the first year is 0.17 percent sale second year 13 percent then 22 percent so forth so on so now we now this is a better comparison when we are uh, we have the common cohort years for each category and then we also have the share how these categories are performing in the first year second year third year and fourth year so now if we um, change the visualization and then product category on the legend and percentage sales um, whatever we want to call that my year product category on legend and here you go Although that the, this this visual look funny, the reason behind that is because my data is a little bit uh, funny. Because but what we are seeing here is some categories started like really not a, a large share in the first year, and then they dropped down like second year drastically dropped down and never had any sale. And third and fourth year, whereas some items started in the first year and they jumped good on the second year, and then they never um, they did anything and they dropped down to third year. That these dark and the um, um, uh, dark and a light blue line the, those categories make more sense they started good and they are continuously growing um, the the blue one is i think uh, is the bike rack so it started small and then it went up and up and it's continuously selling in each year and then also it's growing the share percentage is growing and uh, so that this is this this give you a good analysis in terms of now you're comparing all categories does not matter when their sales started and how much the category is like the product prices or how much dollar amount is that does not matter so we are comparing their share in for the sales in the first second third fourth year and this will grow as more data comes in as the cohort will keep calculating and we have fifth year sixth year and also we are getting the share percentage let's say we introduce new category and that will be start from the first year and it will uh, then we will have a better comparison i hope uh, you learned few techniques out of this uh, how that you can uh, provide some insight to your data using this cohort analysis in this video i use the static uh, calculation where i use the year as a, a fixed year uh, and one two three four and then in the next video part two of this video we will look into how we can make it very very dynamic we can maintain this cohort um, calculations or co cohort metadata outside and then we will use that for the purpose of analyzing here uh, something like okay zero to three months what is the sale then three to six months six to nine and then year one uh, year two year three year four and so forth so on and we will create the table in a way that we can always make the changes to the table a metadata stored somewhere and then our visualization will work accordingly do subscribe my channel and thanks for watching and i hope you learned a few things out of it until next video have a good day bye for now thank you